Hi there and welcome at another video for the Introduction to Bioinformatics course at Utrecht University. I'm now going to look at assignment 10 of uh, still of topic 2, Metagenomics. So in assignment 10 we're going to assess the quality and contamination of our bins using an uh, amazing tool called CheckM. Um, so CheckM, in a way much like the uh, practical we do today, is actually a workflow. In fact, CheckM is a suite of workflows. There's many included in there. So today the workflow will be to take your metagenome assembly and get out of those, get out of those bins. Um, CheckM is a workflow to take each of those bins and calculate a whole bunch of stuff about it and then give you some idea about contamination and completeness. So CheckM is a really cool tool and I'd love for you to do this yourself in a practical but it's also very computationally intensive. It requires about 34 gigs of RAM uh, per person. If it doesn't tell you much, then just remember that the typical laptop has about eight gigs of RAM, I guess. If you have an expensive one, 16. If you have an old one, four. So 34 per person is way too much, even for our server where we all making uh, our calculations on. So I'm gonna show you how this works. Um, how I would, how you could do this when you're uh, doing a metagenomics uh, research project, um, and then we're looking at the output. Okay, so let's just clear this up. I'm now on a server somewhere on the Uithof, uh, Utrecht University, and this server actually has a lot of RAM. So actually 62, so that's plenty. Uh, we can do our 34 gigs check M calculation on there. So I'm in the folder for the course. I have pretty much the same files as you have, plus some extra. And I also have my bins folder, just like you have. Do I? Yeah. My bins folder, just like you have. And now I'm gonna run check M. And like always, you run it perhaps like this. There's a lot of information in there, and we are looking specifically at the lineage workflow. So, um, yeah, so what's nice about this, I'm first going to run it and then I'm going to talk. So, check M lineage underscore WF, see what happens. It gives you an error, it wants you to do minus H. Sure, we do that. Da, 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 da. Run. It gives you, ah, usage, there we are. Check M space lineage WF, whole bunch of options that we're not gonna use, a bin folder and a out folder. So the bin folder we know. That's uh, bins, and let's call the output folder check M. Makes sense. So we can quickly look at the options. Um, bu -bu 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 so something that you can't really do in this practical because we share one computer with all of us but what I can do here is give it a bunch of threads so threads uh, let's just call CPUs um, by using all the 12 CPUs on this system the whole calculation will be a bit faster I hit return oh come on ah so checkm is very specific in that it requires the bins to be named bin.fasta, uh, not .fa. So I have to tell it the end in fa and then it's fine. So whilst calculating, we're doing the lineage workflow. And the lineage workflow is specifically nice um, because it takes, it takes each of these bins and it starts for looking for genes in there. So first it's finding open reading frames. That's actually what it's doing now. Next thing is looking uh, with these genes, let's call genes that is found. It's trying to determine what kind of a bacterium is this. Is this a cyanobacterium? Uh, is it something associated to a plant? Is it something, uh, a bacteriodatus, an E. coli? I don't know. So it tries to very reasonably specific, as specific as it can be. If it doesn't know, then it will be unspecific. It tries to find out what kind of uh, bin, what kind of a genome is this? What organism is this? So that's, uh, in the meantime, that's the step that we're at now. So let's see, uh, looking for genes, some statistics, 
looking for the markers that tell it which uh, which lineage it is and now it's placing these lineage linear so these marker genes into uh, a tree of uh, all the bacteria that it has in its database so why do that there's a lot of work um, so the, the the best reason why is that once check m knows what lineage a certain bacterium is let's say it's a cyanobacteria i'm sure we'll find one of those then it has also in a database a list of genes that all cyanobacteria have once and that's specifically nice it also has a list of genes that all rhizobialis have once uh, so cyanobacteria is uh, a phylum so that's quite broad uh, rhizobialis actually is an order so that's a bit more specific it also has a list of um, genes that all E. coli have, so that's a species even, so that's very specific. So what it can do with these genes, a list of genes for each of these taxonomic groups, it can uh, find out if these genes are present, which tell you about the completeness of your bin. If you're missing half of these genes that should always be there, also that you're missing half of your genome. If you find everything twice and you know of these genes that they should only be there once then you know that you likely have two genomes in your bin that cannot be differentiated properly so metapod thought that these were the same and they put them in one bin so that's what checkm does for you so these calculations will take a bit so i'll be back in a second and we'll look at the results Okay, there we are, calculations are finished. So, uh, um, what did it do? Uh, placing six bins into the genome tree, so it knows what lineage it is. Um, then, knowing what lineage it is, it has these lineage specific marker sets. And it tries to use it in the end to see if it's complete or not. Um, and then it starts using these marker genes to uh, start finding these in the genomes. Then it calculates some statistics. Then you have this table right here. So I'm going to make a nice file of this uh, with QA. So it says uh, up here, check QA. Let's see how that works. Mm -mm -mm. Check QA, marker file. Analyze folder. So I think that is something like this. But was it data slash check M? Oh no, we are already in the data folder. Check M lineage and then just check M. Easy as that. Should get us the same output. Let's double check. Cool. That's what we want. And now I will write this to a file. Let me check how I named this file in the end. Check M quality assessments. Uh, check M quality assessment dot text. Tick, tick, tick. And there you go. So this is the file uh, you also have here. Data check M quality assessment. So now let's open this over here. Uh, let's use this. Just do cut data check and cut. And there you go. You have this table. I made the letters a bit smaller so the entire table fits on here. But uh, feel free to uh, make the video full screen so you can read along. So what do we have here? We have the different bins. Those are the rows in this table. There's the marker lineage that was inferred in this very uh, memory intensive step. So we have an alpha proteobacteria that, uh, uh, well now I have a blackout. Okay, never mind. We have an order, those are Burg Burgholderialis. We have uh, a phylum, those are cyanobacteria and even the, the kingdom that's on the bacteria level. So you see these diff different bins. They were assigned a lineage, but not all at the same level. So kingdom is very unspecific. Basically, it tells you no idea what this is. 
and for alpha proteobacteria and for buccal realis that's actually quite specific so that's well done for each of these different oops for each of these different lineages it has a different amount of genomes to compare to so it tells you for bacteria it compares with 5449 other genomes if it's uh, cyanobacteria it only compares with 82 etc it tells you um, the amount of markers that it knows from all these genomes so these are the markers that should always be present but should be present once and it tells you in how many sets these markers occur so if these markers always co-occur um, then it tells you so then there are a set i'll get back to that so back to the markers for each of these markers it starts counting are these present or are these present zero times so absent present once present twice etc so if you have a good bin these marker genes are always present once right that's the whole point of single copy marker genes and actually for most of our bins that's the case so we can be quite content with these results some genes are absent some are double but if you look at the completeness score that it calculates for you uh, almost all of them except for that for the one are above 94 percent that's really good so normally when you do an analysis like this and you have a sample with perhaps more diversity or imperfect sampling etc you let's say take bins with a completeness above 90 percent if you're not so strict 80 maybe 70 percent uh, so 90 94 to 99 percent is really good we can be very happy contamination is very low and heterogeneity for one bin is high and that's what it does with these marker sets so apparently all markers are there but they're not co-occurring as it expects it to so it says it has a heterogeneity perhaps these are parts of different bins that were put into one can happen so the questions i listed under here is what did you do so you ran this workflow and you put in your bins uh, the question that check m answers so i've, I've went over this um, is about completeness and contamination the quality of your bin the output is these this table um, I don't know what I mean with abbreviations here so let's take that out oops question mark what can you say about the bins you made with this output so you can say about bin one four five six and two that they're actually really good Go analyze these any way you want and you can be very content. Bin free, you may want to throw that out. You don't know what's in there. Um, and looking at the fact that this is, so the whole sampling is like, it's uh, sampling microbes that are associated to a certain host organism. Perhaps bin free is actually leftovers from the host organism. And there's just by coincidence some genes in there that are perhaps shared between bacteria and eukaryotes I don't know what's happening there uh, what can you say about the lineages of these bins so actually uh, so buccal realis are I think beta proteobacteria so we have a bunch of proteobacteria and two cyanobacteria that's also quite specific um, so I guess what's the fun thing to do now so this this table is also definitely that you something that you will put into your report for your master research project so, um, and it's also a very nice a very nice thing to combine with this table we made earlier so that's this one over here so let's say we've been free we throw out that's we so that's this bin we throw out and then you have this table left and you put the completeness and the contamination here on the side oh, actually it's nice to report this too of course and then you report the low and the contamination and then you explain in your report why you're not using bin free but you are using the others so what i guess also nice so let's see uh there were two uh where am i oi 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 yep so two cyanobacteria that's funny so bin one and bin four are two cyanobacteria both with a high quality so let's look at where these bins are so bin one is oh go away bin one is this super abundant bin over here i have to get this here oi, oi, oi. 
I'm confused with all the windows. There we are. Now you go away. Bin number one is the one over here. I'm just not in the way. So it's the super abundant bin, um, the cyanobacterium. So that's the one that we know is already present in the plant, right? So bin number four is the one over here. It's the one that's present on not on the inside, but more enriched on the outside of the plant. So we've sampled two cyanobacteria. One is clearly on the inside and super abundant, and the other is not so abundant and clearly on the outside. So that's uh, quality assessment, uh, completeness, and we've done some uh, basic biology, made some nice tables for our master research project. We are progressing uh, quickly. So next step is to do something with these high quality genomes that we've gotten ourselves now, but that's something for the next assignment. And I'll um, explain that assignment in the video as well. So see you in the next video.